Welcome to the Portraits and Fitness channel. I'm David, a portrait and headshot photographer based in the East Bay, the San Francisco Bay Area. And I'm not here to talk about portraits today, but I am here to continue my updates about a certain aspect of fitness. And that is my lifelong pursuit of fitness and interest. And that is specifically my carnivore way of eating, which I launched exactly nine weeks ago to the day. If you're here as a new viewer and maybe you haven't tried the carnivore way of eating, it's really interesting. I feel like I've just tapped on this zeitgeist. Today I just happened to be on Instagram and I noticed that uh, one of the photography accounts that I follow, Nigel Barker, a very famous and successful photographer originally from the UK, uh, was posting about his doctor, in fact, uh, who he said is quite famous, who prescribed him to go on a carnivore diet. And for at least, I believe it was six months or maybe a year. And he told him to cut out like over a hundred different sorts of food. But it's interesting. It feels like this, this whole consciousness is kind of bubbling up at the time that it's reached um, an important position in my life. So I thought that was interesting. So if you are new to this, you're considering it, um, I hope you stick around because it's been a really interesting and fruitful, no pun intended at all, journey for me for the past nine weeks. It's had its share of ups and downs for sure. Um, but overall, it's just been so worth it. And I have some really good things to report today. It's basically all good news today. So thanks for joining and let's get to it. So uh, I just completed a four day, three night camping trip. It was my first such outing as a carnivore and I really prepared for three meals a day carnivore style. So I boiled a dozen eggs. I brought uh, three or four packets of sugar-free bacon with me, some sausages that were also sugar-free, uh, lots of ground beef, some cuts of steak, some pre-cooked chicken legs that I air fried, and also some steak bites and even some pork belly uh, bites that I make. I cube up pork belly and I, I just, I really fry the crap out of it because the, the fat really doesn't preserve that well. <laughs> so if it's something I want to come back to and not consume right away. I just, I just make it into basically bacon by air, really thoroughly air frying it. Um, so I brought all that and I ended up really just kind of maintaining the same level of hunger that I do at home. And that is essentially if I can, if I have one good meal a day, then I'm usually good for at least the rest of the day, sometimes until the next day. And I'm just monitoring those cravings that I am used to, but I don't really have anymore. And it really went well. Um, the main thing that I ate was bacon in the morning. And then in the evenings, sometimes I didn't really have much of a, uh, an appetite or stomach for anything else. So that was interesting. But I did really enjoy my morning coffee. Breaking out of the tent first thing in the morning, sometime between 6.30 and 7, all three days, I broke out my accoutrements and I made myself a wonderful, rich, aromatic cup of joe and enjoyed it in the early morning sunlight when the camp was still really quiet. I was surprised how quiet it was. And I would take a little walk around the campgrounds and just enjoy the morning stillness and listening to the birds. It was wonderful. And we did quite a bit of activity as well, uh, some in the lake, some hikes, and just my hunger really was no different than when I'm at home. So I ended up coming back home with a bunch of food that I just put back in the fridge and I continued to eat yesterday, my, our first day back. One little breakthrough that's kind of important is that when my wife and I purchased some camping gear last year, she actually insisted that I buy a tent for myself just in case she couldn't take my snoring when we shared a tent together. That was last year. So 
that is no longer a problem, I'm very happy to report. And I was able to sleep through the night without disturbing her and at least in a significant degree with my snoring. She said that I continue to snore a little bit, but it's not super disruptive of her sleep. And so I was able to actually sleep fairly well and enjoy sleeping in the tent. Another issue that I've been reporting on recently has been my ongoing issues with back pain. And I believe that was a digestive blockage. I've reported on that before. I also have uh, mentioned that I believe that's a healing trauma because I have had some history of blockage in that area and also back pain in the lower left of my back. And at its worst, it ran as sciatica all the way down my left leg. But um, that's really in the past. I'm so excited about that. It's just, it's cleared up. I'm able to just bounce out of bed in the morning and I'm not feeling the back pain. And so as soon as we can, it's back to the gym and it's smooth sailing right now. It feels really good. And I've been able to just bounce out of bed and enjoy my days and not really give any additional thought to my back. So that's fantastic. So sorry for that clickbait title about everything being over. That's what I meant by that. My back pain seems to be gone. It's finally in the past. It's finally behind me. No pun intended. And that's what I meant by it's over. The back pain is literally behind me now. And digestion and elimination not my favorite subjects, but uh, it's a fact of life and it's normal. Everything's looking good. And I do think the morning coffee still has a role in keeping things stimulated and regular. So I'm glad for that. But I did notice one thing about coffee is that on some days it just doesn't hit me the way it used to. So maybe there's a little bit of a sign there that I should loosen my grip on my addiction to coffee. And that's something that I will certainly revisit at the 90 day mark, if not sooner. And I also stress that this is something we're doing voluntarily. I'm doing voluntarily. I make the rules and right now coffee rules. So I'm continuing to consume it. And I did want to mention that uh, as far as the back pain going away, I do feel a little bit vindicated in the sense that I trusted my body and trusted that it was enduring what I like to think of as a healing trauma, just putting things in order, kind of resettling and shifting. And it just needed to go through that process. And I think it's whether it was oxalate dumping or some kind of... Um, issues with getting rid of uh, toxins or blockages. I'm not really sure exactly what it was, but I trusted that it would go away if I just gave it a chance and it has. Um, so that means I'm functioning without pain. I'm sleeping better. And when sleep is good, everything is good. Recovery is good. And that means I can exercise more. So I'm feeling very optimistic and happy about that. My weight is at an eight year low at the moment. I'm once again, not really a slave to this scale, but I can see the differences in my appearance and the way I feel. And of course, in the way my clothing fits me. So speaking of my appearance, yesterday I met somebody I hadn't seen in a couple of years at a work site. He hired me to take photos of his deck work. And so we met on site and he immediately noticed that I was looking a lot thinner and better than I had the last time we met a couple of years ago. And we, we talked about diet and exercise. I mentioned that I had gotten started last year, really taking accountability, full responsibility for my health and knowing that I needed to do something to fix my persistent back issues and strengthen a muscle imbalance. It was funny because, um, I mentioned, diet and exercise to him, that that was the real change. But I didn't mention specifically carnivore. 
for some reason. I just held back. I figured maybe that was TMI. I didn't need to go into that. It's confusing for some people. And sometimes they really don't approve. So I didn't need his approval. I didn't want to go that far with explaining myself. And just before we parted, he went on this extended rant about, you know, it's great that you're you're uh, taking care of your diet. You're really watching what you're eating and everything, as long as you don't have too much red meat, because red meat is really doing a job on the planet. And he mentioned that Brazil is uh, maybe cutting into the rainforest so they can clear the way for some pasture land and they're raising a lot of cattle there. And he didn't mention methane and cow farts or cow burps, which is actually a red herring of sorts because they're actually, even if you buy the whole carbon dioxide equals, uh, you know, ecosystem out of balance, which is really not proven, uh, even if you buy that, it's been shown that cows do not contribute extra CO2 to the atmosphere. So that's really not here nor there. But he did mention that it's a kind of a land usage thing and maybe he has a point there. And I didn't really want to counter his argument, but uh, good thing I didn't tell him that the reason that I'm looking better and feeling better is almost entirely due to actually eating red meat. So looking ahead to next week, I'll be on the road once again next week, probably reporting from an outdoor location in the breeze and hopefully in the sun. Uh, but a couple things I want to cover and continue to focus on a little bit are things like the social aspects of the carnivore way of eating such as people like me might enjoy cooking for others. And well, now as a carnivore, I can cook carnivore for others, but I can also cook other meals for people, but I can't enjoy that myself. So is there a little bit of FOMO there? Uh, also eating out at restaurants or preparing something that you know you're going to reach into your little Ziploc bag and munch on. Uh, what do you do when you're when you're not at home, you're not in your own kitchen with your own accoutrements, what do you do? So thank you once again for hanging out with me. I really appreciate all your comments and your support. Please like and subscribe if you would like to get notifications for my future updates. I'm going to continue at least through the three-month, 90-day mark. And then I'll probably be launching kind of something new at that point and uh, celebrating my 90 day carnivore carnivorsary with an appearance with Dave Mack. That's no carb life at zero carb on YouTube. I can't wait to report on how everything's gone at 90 days right now. I'm at nine weeks and back pain's gone and sleeping better, not snoring to any extent down to my lowest weight in eight years just feeling good so until my next update be good to yourself